Bootstrap gives us several CSS classes that we can use to enhance our website. Now one of the ones that we commonly use will be button. At the top, I have a standard button tag. It's just a plain HTML that has not been styled. Below it, I've created some standard buttons in Bootstrap. Now Bootstrap does recommend using the button tag. You do not have to, but it is recommended in many cases. And if I want to use a button in Bootstrap, I need to add the class BTN. Then I'll need to add one or more additional classes depending upon how I want to affect my button. I've created a series of buttons using the different levels and colors that come with Bootstrap. So we have default, primary, success, info, warning, and danger. You'll notice that each of these includes a class in addition to BTN being BTN dash and that name. If I switch back to my browser, you can see the effects of these different classes. First, I have a button that is HTML only without any classes assigned to it. Then I have my different classes assigned to my different Bootstrap buttons. These are default colors that come with Bootstrap and you can override these if you want to. Unlike an HTML button, where if I put my mouse cursor over the button, all I see is a cursor change. When I put it over one of the bootstrap buttons, you'll notice that the colors automatically change. It just lets me know that this is my active button and it's going to be clickable if you were to click or tap if you're in a mobile environment. Now let's look at some additional classes that I can incorporate. Switching back to my text editor, I want to show you how you can change the sizes of our different buttons. For simplicity, I'm going to select our primary button. And I'm going to add several layers of our buttons. By default, our buttons are a normal size, but I can create different sizes. This is going to be our large primary button. Our buttons are inline, so they'll take as much space as they need. So we can put additional text, and as long as we don't put so much text that it rolls into a second line, we're usually going to be okay. As our buttons by default are of size normal, I'm not going to add additional class because it's not necessary. I can make it small as well. I can also make it extra small. Small is useful for our tablets and larger phones, and extra small is designed really for our small phones. If I switch back to my browser and reload, you can now see, depending upon the class that we've applied to our different sizes, you can see how our buttons have changed. With large, we've actually increased both the padding and the font size. With our small and extra small, we've gone down just a little bit in our font size, but have mainly changed our padding so it doesn't take up as much space. This gives us more space in case we either need it for our page and or because we have a smaller display device and we need to provide as much room as we can for the text while still maintaining readability. We can also adjust our button state. Now we have a couple different states. No. Now we have a couple different states that we can use. So I'm going to create three buttons just so you can see them. The first that we're going to create is an active state. I'll do so simply by adding the class active to our button. We normally have a normal state and we're going to leave our middle one as our normal, just so we can see that. But then I also want to create a disabled state. Instead of creating a disabled class, Bootstrap is going to use the disabled attribute of our button. We're going to save it. Go back to our page. Reload. 
You can see our active looks like it does when we normally roll over a button, but we don't have to roll over. This also does remove our rolled over state, so we do want to keep this in mind. My normal, of course, behaves as I would expect, and my disabled is now slightly grayed out, it has a lesser color, and if I put my mouse cursor over it, notice that both my cursor does not change, and it does not have a hover state. Therefore, it gives a good visual clue to our user that the button is disabled and they cannot click or tap on it. If I would like to create an anchor tag that is a button, I can do this. So buttons work well if I'm working within a form or within a navigation bar. So buttons work well if I'm working within a form or I'm doing a lot of JavaScript. However, you notice that our examples so far are purely CSS. There is no JavaScript enabled. So if we want to create an anchor tag that works as a button, it's actually pretty simple. I'll start off with a regular anchor tag. I'll create an href to wherever I want to go. Then I'll add my classes that I've been adding to my button tags to my anchor tag. I'll save my document, go back to my browser, reload, and here's my anchor tag that I'm using as a button. If you found this video tutorial helpful, please like and share it with others. If you want to keep up with other videos that are coming out, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and like us on Facebook. That way you can get the most up-to-date information.